guys, this is Hatsby and I'm coming to you with an updated deck profile today and today I'm taking a look yet again at Sylvans. Sylvans are just kind of fun, uh, it's just one of those decks that is pretty, it's decently consistent and uh, it can still kind of hold its own in like certain situations. Uh, I've OTK'd pretty hard with this deck in testing and it's, it's just a lot of fun, it's just it's just a good deck. So let's get into it, of course we're playing 3 Lone Fire Blossom, it's the one of the best plants if not the best plant type monsters in the game. Playing three of him, don't need to explain him. Uh, three Sage Koya. Uh, Sage Koya is pretty cool, but my favorite is has to be Sylvan Hermitry. Uh, essentially, they both do the same thing, and they get to excavate a card from the top of your deck to the graveyard. But when Sage Koya uh, is in your hand, and you send any Sylvan monster to the graveyard through any means, except when it's essentially destroyed by battle, you can special summon him straight from your hand. Um, also, if he is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, and it will excavate it from the deck and sends the graveyard by a card effect anyway. Uh, you can target one Sylvan spell or trap card in your graveyard and add that target to your hand. Uh, typically that is going to be Sylvan Charity because Charity is busted. So uh, it's just, Sage Koi is just pretty decent in, in that way. Hermitry is my favorite because he's a draw card. Um, if he's on the field, which is not hard to do, I usually get at least two Hermitries on the field every turn or in the middle of the third. That's just what happens. Um, and then once per turn, you can excavate the top card of your deck, and if it's a plant type monster, send it to the graveyard, and if you do, you get to draw a card. So that's why I like him, because he adds more cards into your hand, so that's really useful. Also, if he's sent to the graveyard, you get to look at the top three cards of your deck, and then order them however you like. So um, that's that's why he's my favorite. He's just the most useful, and he lets me to go into some pretty big things. So Hermitry is just, he's just an all-around decent card. Um, I'm playing one Marshall Leaf. Marshall Leaf isn't really good right now because it targets monsters and two of the better decks, uh, those being Magic Specters and, um, and Cosmo, obviously, this doesn't really do well against. So one Marshall Leaf is all I need. I'm not playing the uh, Armory Arm, like OTK, whatever the heck, just because it's not it's it's not as consistent as it was with the way that I'm playing the deck. So one Marshall Leaf is fine, and that's all I'm going to have it as. To Kumo Shuma, we are no longer in a uh, pendulum format, so I'm not like I don't really see the need to play three anymore because you don't need to uh, pop scales or back row nearly as much as you did before. But uh, two Kumo Shuma just does the job, so I'm going with that. Plus, if you have nothing else better to do, and he's got and he's in your hand, you can set him in the next escape excavate five when he gets flip face up so that's pretty useful uh one chair of sprout the th stuff that he can star is insane if when he special summon you get to uh excavate one or two cards and also if he sends the graveyard by card effect after being excavated you can special summon one level one plant type uh, monster from your deck so typically that's going to be the next card and that's princess sprout uh princess sprout's pretty cool because it can be any level you want it to be and therefore you can rank into whatever you want and then uh you can also tribute it to get a ex an excavation so that's pretty cool and then you get to put it back on top of the deck and then you can mill it again the combos you can do with uh princess sprout are pretty good Playing two Rose Lover. Rose Lover is uh, probably one of my favorite cards of the deck. It really fixes dead cards in your hand. If you're having trouble getting out Sichkoya or Hermitry, Rose Lover really helps with that. Plus, you could put it back in the graveyard with Omega, and you can activate her effect as soon as she's in the grave. So, Rose Lover is really good in that aspect. Playing this guy, this guy is the World Carrot Weight Champion, uh, formerly known as Carrot Human in the OCG. Uh, we are getting this this week. If you've been to the uh, sneak peek, you probably have one of these uh, for Shining Victories. Um, Carrot Weight Champion is pretty decent. He allows me to go into rank four. There's only one rank four that I have playing the deck, and that's Utopia. I just feel like Lightning is the best uh, rank four accessible card at the moment. So, uh, Caraway Champion helps you with that, plus he puts cards that you would rather have in your graveyard, uh, back on, like, in, like, in, like, for example, he fixes dead hands sometimes, so that, that helps. So, for example, if you have a Rose Lover and a Hermit Tree in your hand, and you have a Carrot Human somehow in your graveyard, you can, um, send Rose Lover to the graveyard to special summon Carrot, uh, Carrot Weight Champion, and then, uh, banish Rose Lover to special summon Hermit Tree. So, and then you get to go off from there. So, it's just... Uh, Caraway Champion just really helps fix dead hands. That's really good. I'm only playing him one because I don't want to see him all the time. Uh, he's just playing more than one can kind of create dead hands, so that's kind of a bummer. But uh, Carrot Human at one is fine. One Spore, uh, he's really useful. Probably one of my favorite cards in the deck, so uh, Spore is pretty cool. And then one Glow Bulb, obviously, because he just works really well. Uh, I am not playing uh, Beast. Uh, 
Naturia uh, Beast just simply because I can't make him. I have no level 4 Earth type monsters, and I don't have enough Earth type monsters to make him. Um, that would equal up to level 4. The only other Earth I play is Rose Lover, so that's why you're not seeing Naturia Beast down here. Um, but yeah, the one glow bulb is working. Playing three Sylvan Charity. Uh, Sylvan Charity is essentially, um, if you don't know what this is, it's essentially Graceful Charity for Sylvans. Uh, you draw three cards and then you put two cards back on top of your deck uh, as long as one of them is Sylvan. If you don't have a Sylvan in your hand, you have to put the rest of your deck, uh, rest of your hand in any order back on top of the deck. So it's whatever, uh, and it just help, it really does help with the consistency of the deck, so I like it. Three, Miracle Fertilizer. This is the best spell card of the deck by far. Like, I was saying that Charity was busted. This is insane. Uh, it just helps you with your combos and the way that the deck works now. You can really you can really go around your uh, normal summon very easily in this deck, specifically with cards like uh, Caraway Champion. Uh, Miracle Fertilizer really helps with getting those cards on the field and then uh, ranking up into eights, sevens, or fours, depending on what the situation is. So... Uh, Miracle Fertilizer is just really great. Two Malsylvania. I don't want to see this card all the time. It's an okay card. Uh, it's, it's a decent enough uh, field spell. You can set a plant type monster from your hand or face up from your side of the field, which you don't do the latter at all. Um, uh, to the graveyard and then choose one Sylvan card from your deck and place it on top of your deck. You can either stack your deck to get a good draw, like with Upstart Goblin or something, or you could that's the card you're going to mill next during the end of your opponent's uh, turn, which is you'll, it allows you to excavate the top of your deck, and then if it's a plant-type monster, sends the graveyard. So, uh, Sylvania, pretty decent for that. Well, uh, playing three Twin Twister, this does, you really do need to play three. Uh, back row really hurts this deck, and plus you want to get some dead cards out of your hand that otherwise would be like just absolutely terrible to draw into like rose lover or carrot human spore or uh glow bulb you want those cards in the grave uh so twin twister really helps with that as well uh two dark hole and one rack icky. i can't tell you how much how many times that i just have an empty field and so dark hole two double dark hole is fine plus uh more often than not it's just going to get sent back to the uh to the bottom of the deck with the uh excavation effects so it's just what happens one soul charge is essentially the win condition card of the deck if you draw into this you're probably going to win uh one foolish burial uh helps you set up plays like with rose lover or with uh Carrot Weight champion spore etc so yeah uh one upstart for the 39 card deck theory so yeah and then finally, three Solemn Strike. Uh, this is, it's just a good card. I was playing um, Royal Decree for a little bit and just seeing how that went, it wasn't going too well. So Solemn Strike is just, it's the best counter trap right now. So Solemn Strike at three, pretty good. For the extra deck, I am playing uh, for the Sylvans anyway, double Aurea and one Else. If you get either one of these out, you're probably gonna win that as well. Um, Araya is just a good card in general, and then Else is just even better. Else has got 3,200 defense. He's just ridiculously hard to get over. And um, Araya is just pretty, uh, just a decent rank 7 in general. Uh, for rank 4, one Utopia and one Lightning. I just feel like this is the best best ones to go with. Uh, if you want to go with a Dweller and like or Sida or whatever, it, like that's your choice. But I personally just like Utopia and Lightning uh, to get over things because that's really, you need, sometimes you just need a little bit of time to uh, get your plays going. So that's why I'm going with this. Uh, one Felgrand, he can honestly come out. I think I've gone into him like twice in testing. I've tested this deck quite a bit. So uh, Felgrand, it's okay in this deck. Um, honestly, Hope Harbringer is probably better. I go into Hope Harbinger a lot more, especially with Meta right now, being so dependent on spell cards uh, for the top three. So Hope Harbinger is just pretty decent for that. Um, I'm also playing, just for fun, one Lancelot, one Pain Gainer, and one Seven Sins. I go in this way too much. Seven Sins is essentially, this is the new win condition I feel like for this deck. If you make Seven Sins against any deck, it's just, it's so hard to get over. It's just so difficult. Like, even if you can't get, like, even if you get this out against like monarchs for example uh and you can't activate the effect because typically it's like if they're playing the domain lock uh you can't really do anything uh if app like if you get this out before uh they get they get the domain lock up um yes they could probably tribute over this card but if they can't it's just very hard for them to deal with it in general because it's a 4,000 beat stick. Also, if you're playing against Cosmo or BA, it's it's stupid. <laughs> so, Seven Sins, I love, love this card in this deck, and I go into it at least once every match. So, Seven Sins, really good. Uh, one Clear Wing Singer Dragon, rarely go into this. When I do, it's kind of a blowout. One Scarlet, I probably go into Scarlet and Omega the most. Omega probably a little bit more because it recycles my Rose Lovers. Uh, one Trishla, if I can make Trishla, I'll make it because it's just 
it's just good. And then finally, one Leo. It was either going to be this a Star Eater and Leo just went out because I was playing it more often. So uh, Leo is it's just a decent card, so why not play it? So that is it for this deck profile. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, guys, have a nice day.